So with our inverter loss measurement, um, we can measure the DC input power. Uh, this would come directly into something like our, our E-Drive power analyzer. We can measure the three, six, nine phase output power. And we're going to very accurately measure these. You know, th this is an extremely accurate measurement on both sides. They're all pine line. Um, and then we can say, okay, our, our input energy is X, our output energy is Y. Um, our output current is, is a certain value. And okay, on this output current, we have um, that I RMS. Perfect. We can estimate the on resistance with a thermal couple, or we can just estimate the on resistance based on, on data sheets or, or knowledge of the switch. And we can calculate those conduction losses. So we got our I, we got our R, we know how many switches there are. Um, we can start to calculate losses uh, of the switch and get those conduction losses. We can know our switching frequency, we can know our individual losses on the turn off, on the turn on, um, and we can estimate those, those turn on, turn off losses. And then if we really want to get into the details, we can get a, a scope card. We have a 250 mega sample per second card. We can put a, a differential measurement around the switch and, and we can start to look at those really high speed losses in the switch if we want to get down into the details. If we actually want to measure IDS times VDS. So there's a lot of options available with the system we offer. And, and the big thing is we can do it all very accurately. And whatever model you have for resistance, we can implement into the real time and view that as a scope trace. So let's look at a little example. Um, so the first example I have is actually just the turn on and turn off of the inverter switch. So this is the same thing we looked at previously, just, just with real data where we have our voltage in blue, our current in red, and our switch is off. We turn our switch on, we see that voltage go to zero, we see that current um, go, to, go to what the current value is, but we have that little, little overlap time. And we have the same thing on the switch turning off. And we can see we have that little blip in power. And, and this would be an example of how we could characterize that energy turn on, energy turn off. We have a little bit on, we have a very small amount during conduction, but the conduction is a much longer period of time. And then we have a little bit turn off. So that, that's really kind of drive it home. Now, if we take this a step further and we look at a real world example, and you, you might recognize uh, this profile from, from what my colleague Renee showed a couple minutes ago, uh, it's because it's the same. So if you were in on that session, um, we're gonna keep it familiar. And what we have is the voltage in blue, current in red, and then um, our three powers, total power, input power, um, DC power, or uh, mechanical power. And we have a co constant value and then we have a load step. So we have a little increase in torque and speed, or a little increase in torque in this instance. We're doing a, a power average over 20 cycles. So we see a really steady state power. We see a little step up and then we see a big step up. Um, and that's because we caught a little bit of, of this cycle period in that transition. Okay, so we've got our power. This looks cool, but but this is a presentation on losses. So so let's take a little step deeper into the loss. So if we're measuring our power losses, um, the power loss of the inverter, we can see that we have that total power loss in black, and we have this kind of steady state value, and then we have a step up at that load step, and we have a little overshoot. We'll touch more on this overshoot in the motor section. Um, then we have our conduction losses in red. And we can see, again, these are those I squared R losses. And in our software, we're measuring that phase current or those three phase currents. We're saying I squared times R times the number of switches. Um, and we see a step. And we used a really simple model here. Um, this was a model that did not have thermal compensation. Um, so it was just a straight estimate of resistance. Uh, sometimes you got to work with what you have. So when we see that, um, we get that, that step and, and we can see our stray losses. Now in this example, I did not characterize the turn on, turn off losses. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't have that much information on the system. Um, so I rounded that all into what I would call stray losses. And we can see that we get a little more action. Um, we get a little dip, we get a little spike, and then we get a settle out. Um, because I used a very crude model, 
I'm going to get a very crude result. Um, but it's still better than nothing. And we are segregating out a, a pretty good example of, of what that um, conduction loss would be. And then the remainder of the loss, we can, we can more or less attribute to the switching losses. And we see a little increase in switching loss when we increase the current. Um, so interesting stuff. And, and we just start to get more data points. 